There you can. Saturday lads, all right? All not good? Bad, not Happy bad, not bad. Oh, excited. Excitement, yeah. I like for this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> all right. I'll post it How are we doing? All right, I've had a shave. I feel fresh. And mm. sexy. Very tight. Nice. Tight yeah. like tigers. Nice. Tight like tigers. You'll shit on my life, yeah? Shit. Yeah. Very nice. <laughs> You look like a Gage Warriors Conor McGregor. Yeah. Oh, funny that. So on that note, I thought I'd try his uh his forwards that see, you know that. Like that is that's a perfect segue. Well done, Andy. Yeah, he absolutely <laughs> legend. Yeah, he's very creamy. Mm, nice bit of juice. Tasty. Yes. Uh yes, it is very, very nice. Is it better than Guinness? I'll let you know after I finish off four of them. Okay. Fair. How have we been, lads? Good week? Not bad. Ready for the bank holiday weekend. Work has been shite, so looking forward to just a few days to chill. Starting with you guys tonight. This oh. is going to be a fun start to my weekend. Yeah, I'm looking forward to this. What about yourself, Andy? Same, mate. Yeah, I'm um, looking forward to the, the Easter break and, uh, yeah, looking forward to, to this evening. It seems like only a week since we've last done it. Yeah, It does, doesn't it? It does. With that, the chat, I think the chat has been here since, since last week. We've got Captain Comics. So, hoi there, mates and mermaids. Thank you very much for joining all the way from across the pond. Um... What Mr. Fuzzy, Infernals, what a triumph of a book. Fantastic achievement. Comics are good again. We shall delve into that later. Back, Dan. Happy Good Friday Eve, chums. I thought that said something <laughs> else, and I thought it said cunts, but <laughs> it says chums. Uh, <laughs> Dr. Von Hoot, good evening, good evening, good evening, good and good. Li- li- good evening, one and all. We've got Connie Dalton. Good evening, darling. Thank you very much for joining. And if we didn't know how to survive, the Canadian Survivalist is here to help us. You might need it. For this week's show and we've got dead man good evening just watch good scare Pete. very very good we don't Thank need you. to talk about pete's fourth or fifth or seventh show venture that he's got going right he's on one show tonight as he has been for yeah. the past year and it's the killer comic show okay it's it's what peter refers to as practice until he gets yeah. to the killer comic <laughs> show <laughs> that's right that's absolutely it. a build up do you know what i mean a build up until this show obviously everything leads up to this week but um Andy, it was good to see you back. I think you went under the radar, didn't you? The other night, the old uh, Panels and Pike gang were, uh, were were back in business for one night it only, was, for one very it, long night only. It was Panels and Pints without Panels and without any Pints. So yeah, it was it was a it was a weird evening, um, but one that we'll never do again. Uh, you'll be glad to hear. Yeah, one and done. What's it going for? <laughs> it was fun. It was good fun. One I mean, and done. One and done sounds like my um, my killer comics um, scoreboard. One done, I've signed <laughs> out. Anyway, and it also sounds like something else. But talking about killer comics, killer covers, let's do it. <laughs> If you ever needed a banging beat to get you in the mood for a drink fueled Easter weekend. <laughs> I love a good banging beat, I tell you. <laughs> there we go. That's your nickname, isn't it, Mr. Banging it Beats? It is. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Right. So, business end or business start to the show as always. Banging. Killer, <laughs> bang it, banging Pete. There we go. The killer covers for March 27th, which was new comic book yesterday. The day new comic book day yesterday there we go oh by the way andy fuzzy said it was a joyous return to form here we go thanks fuzzy appreciate you it was enjoyable it was very very enjoyable killer covers what have we got this week let's have a look oh do you know did, what did, <laughs> what just happened did you was that like an old you have a bang and beat there <laughs> <laughs> and i'm spent yeah <laughs> <laughs> not quite sure how to put that um i've got to give credit to andy for this one because i was i was going to pick it um but andy kind of beat me to it and said i'm going to pick this one because i know charlie forward was going to pick this one and that was after last week's show at around 20 past 11 and he was like i'm going to leave this one to you so that that is a sign of friendship right there thank you very much sir I mean, what can I say? It's the kind of guy that I am. Um, so it clearly means that the only winner this week is going to be Peter. Um, <laughs> but oh, I am like, listen, this is sold out everywhere. Um, mm-hmm. I was watching a few whatnots this evening and it was yeah. gone for 25 quid. Yeah. Really? I mean, what is going on? Like, it's, mm-hmm. a, it's, a, it's a stunning cover. It's beautiful. It ticks all your boxes, Charlie. 
Um, it's Harley Quinn. It's Sosa Mica. You know, is it worth twenty five pounds? I know you. I know you've got a punch on for the, the old. Uh, oh, I love it. I have indeed. I have indeed. But is it worth twenty five pound though? Really, for a, for a cover seat? Yeah. I mean, time will tell. Time will tell. Yeah. But you know, it's a bit of formal for it just because it's um, sold out. I think but yeah. it's a cracking cover. Great. But yeah, it is awesome. Yeah, um, yeah. I think all my fancies are played out in, in one image. Yeah, so is Marco Harley Quinn dressed as a cowgirl. What, what is there not to love? If if this doesn't get the vote, I will. I'll. I'll, I'll eat my hat. If, if I had one. But yeah, so is Marco Cover C Women's History Month for Harley Quinn thirty eight. Peter, what do you think about it, sir? So, so, no, so, 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 there, there, I, like, boom, boom, I like that. Uh, so there, there is no denying this is a sexy cover. There's no denying there's something alluring about the tip oh. of the hat, the leather gloves. Do that again. Do that again. Alluring. Oh. The the tip of the hat, the leather gloves, and the open mouth is doing it for us. Um, but and but guys, <laughs> it's 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 another bloody. Oh, it's Harley Quinn. Do you know what I mean? It, I love it. Don't get us wrong. I do love it. I love it. I, she looks amazing in it. But I'm a bit kind of Harley in a sexy posed out, I guess. Um, but yeah. it's it's nice. It's nice. It's nice. Yeah, not her best of the women's history set she's done, but it's Harley. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. But yeah, no, this is this is what I've gone for. It was an absolute no-brainer because... My head's really small, so anything highly like, tickles my fancy, so I'm always going to go for yeah. it. So <laughs> there's another joke there about a small head. Everyone, <laughs> everyone. <laughs> what have you had? Have you had the Apple Pace? <laughs> it's, it's it's sponsored by Pepsi. Um, oh, okay. It's a, yeah, it's another yeah, Ma- too much caffeine. <laughs> there we go. So this is my pick. This is my Ponchon Harley Quinn. Sexy. It is sexy. Up next. I, c- I couldn't not go for this. Now th- I am a massive horror nerd, as you know. Mm. One of my favourite movies of all time is um fright night the original fright night is just absolutely amazing um and i was just flicking through all the variant covers and i know feral has got a billion and one um variants and this i just spotted this and i just nearly wet my pants i just this jumped straight out at us this is the classic fright night poster um i love the way they've wrote feral at the bottom there with the, the kind of the fangs yeah th- this hits all the nostalgia feels for me and it's different I haven't seen this done in this kind of way before, so really, really liked it. And um, this is the one I'll definitely be buying purely for a cover purchase. To, well, I, I want to read Feral as well, yeah. but I'll definitely be buying this as a cover purchase. See, for me, when I see this, I, I think there were so many of them. Again, it yeah. is Stray yeah. Dogs all over again. Oh, absolutely. Obviously, obviously, it's 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 Tony Fleet. Um, is it? Yeah, Tony Fleeks and um, Trish Forstner that did Stray Dogs as well. So it's the, it's the combined team again. I just don't know if this is going to be another cash cow. Like, there's some amazing covers out there, and this is yeah. definitely one of the best. Um, I just hope the story lives up to it because I, I don't think this is basically the flip side of Stray Dogs, isn't it? This is about the cats. Yeah, um, absolutely. It's going to be interesting, I, so I'm definitely going to read it. It would be interesting, maybe, for another show, Charlie, because I, I got I got a shock when I was scrolling through just how many covers there are for mm. this book again. It was like, how weird, man. Yeah. It, yeah. It, it's mental, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but it's a good cover, though. Andy? Yeah, I, I love it. Um, I'm I, I'm like you guys. I'm just less concerned about the covers and more concerned about mm-hmm. what's in them inside. Yeah, yeah. It. I've not tried to. I've not read it. I read it yet. Have any of you guys read it? No, no, not yet. No, not, not, yet. Yet. not yet. No. So that that's one for the list, and I think it's maybe on our list for for um, sneak peek. So yeah. we'll see. Yeah. Dead man has said. Uh, read a review. Sounds maybe better than Stray Dogs. Yeah. Mm, interesting. Was there was a, oh. there was a good cover. It was the Poltergeist one. Um, yeah. where all the dogs are kind of looking up in the house. That was quite good. Uh, there we go, uh, Dr. Von Hoot. On the flip side of that, it says Feral Issue 1 was a bit of a letdown. Okay. Oh, okay. interesting. I mean, for me, so I know we're going off on a slight tangent, but for me, Stray Dogs was superb, but I absolutely enjoyed reading it as a trade paperback, not as a single mm. issue. Yes, yes. I think, I think the complete story mm-hmm. was better than the sum of its parts, yeah. if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, this yeah. might very well be the same. I might not read this unless we read it for mm-hmm. the show. I yeah. might not read this until it's finished and read it in mm-hmm. one sitting. Yeah, no, it's a good call. It's a good call. But yeah, it's a great cover. It really, really is a good cover. Uh, and then, oh, look at this. Again, um, if, if it wasn't for me handing the winning cover to, to Charlie, uh, but I, I went for I went for the Penguin issue number eight from DC Comics. This is a cover B by Dustin Yen, 
and this is a card stock variant and this is I great think i think it's fantastic i think mm. the, the, i think what's really interesting about this is obviously if you if you just take away the eye and that nose you take that away like you wouldn't read in it obviously if it didn't have the penguin number eight issue on it and i, I think it would be hard to tell yeah. what this character was or what they were trying to portray but it's just mm-hmm. those two little bits of this that, that really make it pop. Um, and obviously it's going for that sort of like, you know, uh, negative space sort of type of thing. So yeah. um, I love this. It's the one that caught my eye when I was browsing through League of Comic Geeks. So yeah, um, I, I went for this one. What do you th- guys think? No, I like it. I think it's really good. I absolutely love it. I, I'm a bit of a fan for the negative space kind of things. Do you know what I mean? Or just simple two colours. Um you immediately know who that is, don't you? Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? It, it doesn't need the penguin written on the cover and all the rest of it. You immediately look at that and know who it is. I, I think it's a yeah. really clever, good cover. I like it. Yeah, no, I think it's, I think, I think it's nice, and it's on cardstock as well, so it's going to be a good quality. Yeah. Um, so yes, so the vote is live over on the YouTube community panel, and then we will find out at the end who is in the luck of the gods this week and has won. So, cool covers. Straight into the no, straight into the reviews this week, Pete. We've got week number twelve, Ooh. which was last week. We've got it was touching. It was a touch and go moment this week. I have to say, seriously, was that the was that the forged like I did that? <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. I wish it was because I could put up with that. The fact that like from the midnight hour until I think it was like just past six o'clock on Sunday, we was reading April. And I was like, what the hell? What's, what's going on there? What, what is going on? I don't think any votes have been cast. But that was it. We managed that with two fantastic comics. I can confirm, though, you would have seen my Instagram post, that April does smell of bananas. Yeah. Give it a little scratch, and it does smell of bananas. So that was. I didn't buy it, though. I was tempted to, and I was like, what am I actually going to do? Who's April? Uh, O'Neill. <laughs> April O'Neill. Yep, there we go. Um, but yeah, we ended up with these two amazing comics, Beneath the Trees Where Nobody Sees, issue number four, and then The Infernals, issue number two. Up first, we've got IDW Publishing, Beneath the Trees Where Nobody Sees, art and written by Patrick Hoveth. We've got the main cover by Patrick Hoveth, cover B, Riley Rosmo variants, and we've got the one in 25 black and white storybook variant by Riley Rosmo, and then we have the final order comics, Amy Memberson variant. Which one of you two would like to take this away? Because I, I, yeah, I mm, love this. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna say. I, uh, I think you just did start there, Charlie. <laughs> rock and roll. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> this, this for me, right? I, again, I've got to give a massive shout out to Peter because I don't think without Peter saying this would have totally gone under the radar for me. I kind of wouldn't have paid any attention to it. It was, I think, when it was kind of. The premise of it when it first came out was like animal animals are farthing wood meats yeah. um summer cover and i was like i'm really not into that I'm, I'm really not massively into that like these how wrong was i but like, i think i jumped on it i think on pete you was like you've got to read it you've got to read it you sent a message in the group chat and and from issue one i was hooked i think the writing and and the art lend themselves so well to like Patrick Hoveth doing both of them. Um, I've said it time and time again. I think if a writer and an artist can do the same thing, they know exactly what direction they're going in. They know exactly where the characters are going. They know the monologue and everything. This for me has everything enjoyable about a comic. It's got the uh, like the the intense scenes, the suspense. It's got the. It's just all round fucking awesome, man. Like this is every time this comes out, I look forward to reading this and I'm now kind of on the edge of my seat because the way that this ended, I was like, the mouse on the front cover is a conniving so-and-so and and you think (laughs) they've met their match. Like how how is this actually going to play out? I thought issue three was good, but issue four was so narcissistic when he just took, he was at the end, he's like, I've got to take a picture. You know what I mean? I've got to take a picture before, before I've got to get the last picture there. Um, It's just great. And I think this is going to be so awesome as a trade paperback. Yeah. I think I don't really collect many hardbacks, but this I think would lend itself so well with the artists, like all the art design and stuff like that. I, this would look amazing on a bookshelf. And I, for one, am definitely picking this up. I think this is my favourite issue so far. Very tense, isn't it? Very yes. Yeah. yeah. I am. Um, I, well, you know, I absolutely adore this book. It's got everything for me. I don't think this story has missed a beat 
I think every issue has had something to keep us interested and entertained. Mm -hmm. Um, I love the art style. I love the development. It is very reminiscent for me of Dexter. Do you remember the old TV series Dexter? Mm -hmm. Very much like yes. Dexter. But you know what? I loved Dexter. So, th so this is working for us. Um, I picked as my page that that first page there because I zoomed in on the bottom right panel where the little old lady and the mm -hmm. the, the kids in the background. And when you zoom in on his face, he's a smug little prick. Yes. Yeah. He's just got such a... You, you look at him and you think, yeah, you're a... You, I, I could smash your face in quite happily, mm -hmm. you know. And I just think the way they've t told his story is really interesting. And in this series, this issue, you get that beautiful moment where he kind of... It kind of spells out what he's been doing to the main character. And she loses it. And you can feel the hurt. And, you, and I really believed, yeah, this is a little nutcase now who's going to destroy you because you've upset him. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Um, I, I think, I'd be interested in what, what you guys think. I think we're going to get more at some point, maybe he's not in this series, maybe he'll do a follow on, of his time before this. I think he's been bumping people off when yeah. he's been at university and things like that or whatever it was. Yeah. Well, do you know what I think? Do you know what I think is quite good about this is that obviously you Nodi's know, saying as quiet as a mouse. Like in, in issue number three, he kind of snuck up on her. In this issue, he kind of snuck up on her because was she dreaming when she looked out of a window? Um, and even on this, when she's in the car, again, he sneaks up on her and he's like, just yeah. wanted to take a couple of pictures before you leave. Yeah. He knows, like, he's a conniving, like, he is, but you can't help but like him in a weird way. You kind of yeah. think, yeah, yeah. I really can't help but I enjoy when he comes because I'm like, what's he going to do next? How is he going to? He's always like two steps ahead. Yeah. It's, it's just awesome, like, especially with the paint. Like, that was, yeah. that was, that was pretty yeah. smart. Yeah. Andy? I loved it. Um, I, I think this is definitely the best issue. I think we, we've seen a lot of characteristics in the main character that we hadn't seen before. Uh, one being um, them getting really, really angry. It's the first time in four issues, uh, considering what, what, what they do in their past time, mm -hmm. that they get really, really angry. I, I, I can't help but feel like, that, you know, that there's, there must be some meaning behind the title of this book, Beneath the Trees, where nobody sees, sort of thing. Um, the, the, I think at the end of the arc, or at least the end of the story, it will all make sense and we'll go all the way up. Okay, so that's why this is called Beneath the Trees, where mm -hmm. nobody sees. Is, is it almost that, you know, all the characters are watching each other and they're all secretly bumping people mm -hmm. off and don't yeah. sort of bump each other off to, to become the last person that nobody sees because there's nobody else there for, to, to watch them? Uh, yeah. That's kind of where my head was going when I was yeah. reading this issue. I think, f for me as well, and I, you know, I hate to admit it when, when I think Luke uh, from Hydro Collectibles has made a good point, but he made a, an interesting comment on a show we did a little while ago, when we were talking about the fact that this series is strange in that they're all animal characters, but then when she was in the woods, there's a family of bears walk past. Yeah. Or some of the animal characters have pets. Others are butchers cutting up animal meat you know so the luke's thought was that at some point near the end it's going to be revealed that that's how she sees the world but they're actually humans mm -hmm. you know oh there you go and um, so dead man's just commenting there. so I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if something like that there's a twist like that at the end you know von who said to well she does all the killings beneath the trees and buries them there didn't that happen in issue one yeah uh two yeah issue one, one or two one or two can't remember i just think i don't know i don't I don't think there's any other comics from Patrick Hovoff that I've read, unless I've missed something and I've read it and I haven't really known about it. I don't know if you two have. No, it's new to me. Totally new to me. Yeah, me too. But yeah, I mean, I think, yeah, yeah, there was Fuzzy saying, uh, makes me think of the saying, can't see the wood through the trees, uh, like it's been staring yeah. us all along. I think there's definitely going to be a big twist. I mean, what are we on issue number four? Is it, is it, is it five issues? Uh, five or six, I'm not sure. Yeah, see, I think I can't see how this is. I'm just going to have a quick uh, the trees. Let's have a look. Um, so it is so it's six issues. Trade people back is it on the 13th of August? Looks yeah. like that's interesting. Yeah, I mean, I can't. I'm I'm loving this. Like, I kind of obviously. Like Von Hoot said, it makes a good read to read it weekly, but it will be awesome as a trade paperback. There's some comics that I really look forward to picking up as a trade paperback and reading again and i definitely think this is one of them yeah. because i think there's going to be little nuances in this that you've missed 
and that you're going to go through it. Like I think it, uh, I think it was you, Pete, that mentioned totally going off topic about the TV show, the House on Haunted Hill or yeah. whatever it is. When you watch that again, you you got to try and spot the ghosts yeah. that show up in it and stuff like that. I think this comic is going to do that. You're going to get to the end of it and then you're going to go, oh, how did I not notice that in issue number two or how did I not see that in issue number one? So I think it's great. That's a great point, Charlie. I've not I've not gone back and had a look. So we know now, don't we, from this issue that the, mm. the, the little mouse was watching her when she buried the, yeah. the duck boys. So I, I wonder if we'll go back and have a look at that particular issue, if he's mm -hmm. in any of the scenes or in any of the backgrounds yeah. or anything like that. Because mm -hmm. I think he's going to be watching her and you're going to notice in certain panels, wherever people are facing that way, he's probably looking. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I think there was one there was one panel where the, the woman that died, the really bitchy woman, she was looking in the mirror and everyone's like looking at the TV screen or something. So I wonder if that's something where they're looking. Yeah, yeah it's, it's things like that you kind of think, ah. Oh. But yeah, overall, I think this is this was one of a really, really good read from from last week's comments. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, it's like it is a suspense horror, and I think uh, Dead Man said you shouldn't really feel. Yeah, that was it. Yeah, you shouldn't feel sorry for a mass murder, but you do. Yeah. You do end up. Yes, yeah, it's, it's a weird world we live in, isn't it? But it, but it's interesting, isn't it? Because in because that's how I felt about watching Dexter. Yeah. But it, but at least in Dexter, I kind of made peace with my mind about that because Dexter was killing bad guys, drug dealers, murderers, and stuff like that. She's not. She's just killing anybody, isn't she? So the duck yeah. guy at the start had nothing. He was wandering the streets and she bumped him off. So you're absolutely right. We should we should be hating her. We should want yeah. her to get her comeuppance. Yeah. But it doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. But she's but... cute. She's cute, isn't she? Look at her cuddly little face. Look at her. Yeah. Each to their own. Each to their own. I've got a pawn chance about Harley Quinn, and you clearly have one about furry... Big hairy bears. Oh. <laughs> that wear marigolds. So why not? There we go. Crack on. <laughs> and if you come out and say you fancy the mouse, game over. <laughs> or slumps it off them. Or we're option bought. <laughs> exactly. Or sinks it. You know what I mean? There you go. Look, technically, she's a serial killer, not a massive murderer, if I'm being pedantic. Yes, you are being pedantic. You, you really are. Are. You, are. you are. No need for that whatsoever. So that was an awesome read. And, and moving on from another awesome read, Infernals issue number two. Written by Ryan Parrott, who many of us know from uh, Power Rangers. And the art is by John Pearson. Main cover by John Pearson. And the art on cover B is by the sensational and super sexy Danny for variant B. Who would like to take this away? Andy, I think this was your pick. Um, so if you'd like to run with it, that'd be much appreciated. Yes, boss, no problem. Um, so the Infernal was issue number two. Um, I, I'll just kick off by saying this is probably one of the best books this year mm -hmm. for me. Um, I think it, when whenever we were doing the FOC show, we picked up on this one saying that this looks to be a good one. Um, and obviously it's Image Comics, so they, they, they don't put out rubbish most of the time. Um, so synopsis of this is that we've got the, 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 the devil, as it were, who is, is ready to, to pop his clogs. Um, and he wants to get one of his children to, to effectively take over um, and, and run the show for him. Mm -hmm. But um, he's he's already decided that one of them is a, is a no go, so it's between the others, um, and it's kind of a just telling the story and the backstory of those uh, those children battling for the affections of their, their dying father. But in this particular issue, we get to meet other people within the realms of you know um, hell, as it were. <laughs> one being his ex wife, which I just thought was a, an absolutely superb touch. Um, and I'll, I'll let the guys talk about the end because I know that uh, Peter, you picked the end panel there. Um, yeah. But I, I love, I love the pace in this book. I love the, the storytelling. Some of the, some of the language in this is is, is absolutely brilliant. Um, they don't hold back at all, and I think the artwork is very fitting of the story. Um, uh, I think it's been the two issues have been absolutely superb. Can't wait for more. Give me more infernos. I think it's great. I think this is pretty much set up for a TV show as well. I think yeah, it's been, been a great TV show. App, yeah. A Netflix series or something like that, this would do amazing. Definitely. What about yourselves, guys? I um, absolutely love this comic. I think it's it's right up my street. I'm loving the the horror element, but I'm loving the humour in it because there's, there's some sick yeah. humour in it as well, you know? Yeah. Um, I loved the scene where they kind of go and try and use the powers on the guy and he's kind of just laughing it off because he's protect got protection and whatnot. I thought that was really well done. Um, I, I like the fact that in my simplistic little brain, you kind of think, you know, kids of the devil would be all powerful and stuff like that, but yeah. they're absolutely not. The, the bollocks in it up, left, mm -hmm. right and centre, you know, they're, <laughs> they're not quite working out. So I love that. 
Um, I nearly picked that that page with the um, the step wave because I love that. I love the demon behind her with the t shirt and everything. Yeah, yeah. But I picked that last page with the two the two twins, as it were. Just the art is is amazing. The faces on them is stunning. I, yeah. Again, another absolutely cracking book that I'm loving. Honestly, I just I, I think this is this is great. Like I love all comics about like the um like the cults and God and devil and the good versus evil and stuff like that. This is awesome. Like I, I had no choice but to pick his ex wife showing up <laughs> with with a Frankie relaxed t shirt on. I thought this was just like oh my god, this is it's just wicked. And then the two people that they oh uh, your, your granddad wants to see you. It's like that's like fuck, is he is Satan actually going to make an appearance in this? Um, there was one panel um, where um, all the demons and he's going through all his life. He, should, he said he should have fucked more. He said yeah. he should have drunk more. He should have killed more and stuff like that. That was literally his life passing before his eyes, wasn't it? And he was like, literally, I just want to sit there. I just think this is awesome. Yeah. Like, it's so good. The, the scene at the end, I think, like, Nero's going to totally fuck things up. Um, it's, it's something that I didn't even expect. I think when Andy showed issue number one for his, his indie pick a few weeks ago, I was like, um, okay, yeah, I'll give it a read. I didn't give it a read. I only read the two issues yesterday and I thoroughly enjoyed them. I thought it was wicked. I really, really enjoyed it. Yeah. I only picked this up really because Alex Cormack was doing the cover mm-hmm. B for, for issue one, I think it was. And I'm a big fan of his artwork. And then I think Fuzzy read it and recommended it. So I thought, well, I'll give it mm-hmm. a go and just, yeah, fell in love. Loved yeah, it. look, if, if only all comics could be like this. Yeah. I think the two comics that we had last week, like, could you imagine we're sitting here reading a story about smelly bananas? D- d- I don't understand your issue. That that would have been just as entertaining. Yeah, but you've got, you got a thing about bananas. Like when we go to a, a, a Comic Con called Thought banana. Bubbles, uh, they stopped doing them now in Weatherspoons, which we found out last year, which yeah, is empty unfortunate. The bowl. Empty the bowl. So Stop banana ice cream, though. Always got banana ice cream. We ended yeah. up drinking brain damage. Was it brain damage brain in the damage. end? Yeah. Well, yeah, absolutely rank. Fuzzy has said, uh, this is fantastic. The artist is blind. The writing is dynamic. I loved every page so far. I can see this go. Like, this panel, Andy, you picked is horrendous. Mm. Absolutely horrendous. And the thing is, right, the occult is, is massive. Like, people take this seriously. So there's definitely, you can read this and you can kind of think, this is definitely happening somewhere. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, it's definitely happening somewhere. I don't think. Well, what, what, you don't think there's. You don't think there's things like this happening in the occult, in the dark, in the deep. Carlos, world. Carlos, you've been reading too many comics. <laughs> I mean, you have to probably narrow that down a bit. What do you mean? This is definitely happening. You mean there's a demon walking around with a Frankie relaxed T-shirt? No. Or yeah, do you mean 100%. people are? Do you mean people are? You know, practicing the occult. Hundred percent, both of them. Both of them. <laughs> Definitely both of them. There's my get out of free card. Both of them. He is, is from the south exactly. end. He is. He is. Exactly. <laughs> after after what happened uh, a couple of days ago in, in near where I live, you can definitely say that some of this shit okay. is happening. Um, okay. But we're, we're talking about that offline. That's not a problem. Um, but yeah, there we go. This is it, Fuzzy. Not many books I read each pay twice. Just enjoyed it more. Uh, the Godfather with Satan. Yeah. Tremendous. I thought it was awesome. How weird, how weird is Croydon? <laughs> where, where do you think this book's going to go? Like, I, I, I was, I was sort of thinking about it after reading issue number two. It would be a nice sort of twist at the end if we actually find out that even though he's like the devil, that we find those little nuances in his character that mm-hmm. he then flips it and he goes to heaven, and then it's a whole other arc about the flip side uh, in heaven. So you've got all the, the, you know, the angels and stuff like that, and. Uh, where do you think it's going to go? Mm, I, I always do. there's been a few movies, Legion, I think I can't remember. There's been a few movies where angels quite often are portrayed yeah. as badass mm-hmm. kind of nutters, you know. And I quite like that twist that the angels aren't particularly the good guys in a lot yeah. of the time. Um, I, I don't think he's going to hand it over to anybody at the end because I think they're all worthless. Do you know what I mean? I don't mm-hmm. think anybody's mm-hmm. going to come to the forefront. It wouldn't surprise me if he doesn't die. I think he'll. He'll live on in some shape, or he'll die and be reborn. We'll get the the kind of the rebirth of him or something like that. I think last the biggest issue, last page God yeah. turns up or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah. I think the biggest thing for this comic is that <laughs> I hope we don't see Satan, because every single person will be reading each issue thinking, "Oh, is he going to make an appearance? Is he going to make an appearance?" Yeah. And the biggest thing was that we don't see him. He's yeah. just there. We kind of and then we're kind of left to our own devices of how he's going to be portrayed, how he's going to look like. 
is he going to come out looking like Satan or is he going to come out looking like something else? Yeah. Which again, I think that leads on to your point, Andy, that it could totally flip the script and they uh, and he, maybe the God and devil come out holding hands. It's one way you get another arc out of it, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Why not? There we go. But yeah, I love this. I, th I thought it was great. And I love the fact that the goat, like he just wants to hand it over to the goat. He's like, you just take it on, man. You yeah. just, he's like, I can't, I'm a goat. <laughs> <laughs> what can I do? Like, I can't run. I'm, I'm a goat with, with a cross on my head. I'm, I'm a goat. That's it. That's all it is. But yeah. But yeah, I thought it was a great comic. I'm loving that. This is like, she's, yeah, Frankie Relax, man. Everyone loves a Frankie Relax t shirt. <laughs> He doesn't, but everyone else does. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, oh, awesome comic. So that was a, yeah, that was another. The the community got it right for once. Nearly didn't. Nearly fucked it up. But we we came through. So on that note, we are at the Killer Indie Picks for April third. We're in April already next week. We've got some absolute bangers up this week. Up first, Andy. This is a sublime pick. I'm so glad you picked this, mate. Uh, yeah, this is Image Comics again. This is Under York, issue number one. Um, they're written by Sylvain Runberg, and Mika Andolfo is doing the artwork. Um, quite a long synopsis for this one, so bear with me. Mini series premiere, uh, New York's Destiny uh, is written in its depths. Alison Walker is a promising young painter in Manhattan, but she has a secret. She's also a witch. She and her family belong to the world of Under York, a mysterious underground New York where five powerful clans of witches have reigned for centuries. These families, with their strict code of life, drawn from the country's main communities, African, Irish, Chinese, Mexican, and American Indian, uh, practice magic as powerful as it is dangerous. <clears throat> for generations, they have been hunted and persecuted. Today, they secretly influence life on the surface and its inhabitants. The revenge is to participate and the destiny of a world that banished them. And this is the universe in which Alison Walker grew up, the universe she fled and doesn't want to hear about anymore until fate catches up with her. Um, and, yeah, so that's that for me. I'm all in. I, I've never heard of a book that no. kind of a... It's, it's, it's a really intriguing um, mm -hmm. synopsis. So, yeah, I'm all in for this one. What about you guys? I'm, like, Image for me and my favourite publisher at the moment like image uh, are constantly putting out hot shit like some of the stuff that i'm reading i don't i'm not even paying attention to some dc stuff or, or marvel and, and boom studio some of the stuff that i've been reading from image is it's been consistently great for the last few years now and they've got some serious powerhouses working for them i mean like even merker and dolfo she does i think it's like blasphemous is a new one that she's got out yeah. for a distillery and stuff mm -hmm. but she's still doing amazing stuff like there was one that she did with like a devil secretary which you'd look at it and you think oh, it looks like a pile of shit but it was a really interesting story and the artwork was really good um and she's doing the artwork on this i'm, I'm all for this this looks this looks wicked yeah same um everything i like you know witches and they'll have monsters and goblins and all that kind of stuff yeah sounds superb really looking forward to this here we go dead man can i be pedantic now they won't be out until thursday bloody bank holidays yeah <clears throat> All right, mate, so it's April 4th. April the 4th, Killer Windy Picks, there we go. So, Void Rivals. So, I've jumped back on this. Um, there's, there's not much to say about this issue. I've read up to issue six. I've still got number seven to go. But all it says is Darak and Solia go face-to-face -face with Proximus, face-to-face -face with certain death. That's kind of all it says for the uh, for the, um, um, the premise of this one. Pete, you, you're up to date on this, aren't you? Loving it. So... I lost the will a little bit halfway through, I think, and then I picked it back up. The last issue was really strong and introduced this yeah. kind of new okay. bad guy. Um, so, yeah, I'm I'm back on this now, so I'm looking forward to this one. I think it'll be good. And have you been reading this? Or? Gave up after um, issue two, didn't go back. Same um, as what I did, yeah. Yeah, um, I don't know if I'll go back again because I don't, I don't know if you really need to read this to enjoy the other stories. No, you don't. You don't, but I, I kind of thought you did because when I read issue number one, I was like, oh my God, there's a Transformer. So then I jumped over and then I kind of, as you dropped off on number two, but I'm glad I went back because I really, really enjoyed it. I think okay. from what I understand, the villain that's introduced in this is going to be the big bad of the Energon mm -hmm. universe. So it, it will tie in potentially at some point. I think th this series has suffered a little bit from, um, what's the... the the writer called who did um sixth sense and things like that oh um 
I can't remember what it's called. I know you. Yeah, I know you're talking about though. Can't remember what it's called. But um, but all of his films now you watch waiting for the twist, and it's yeah. kind of spoiled his ability to make any kind of story because you're literally just waiting for the twist. That's a little bit how I feel about Void Rivals. Every issue now I'm waiting for the Transformer to turn up. Maybe not guest um, M. Night Shyamalan. Yeah, shall I? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas actually I'm almost forgetting to read and enjoy the story because I'm mm-hmm. I'm disappointed of oh, yeah, yeah, there's yeah. no Transformer yeah. in that one. You yeah. Know? yeah. Yeah. So yeah, so there's that one. But I mean it is enjoyable. I think I think there's like ten issues to this. I could be wrong, it might be yeah. ten or twelve, um, or it might be ending on eight, I'm not too sure. It's picking up again, isn't it? It's picking yeah, up again. It is. Andy, this one did we we read issue number one of this was like some weird ass looking duck duck bird duck. type of thing where they came <laughs> to Came to get it. Wow, Jesus! Yeah. I thought that was what I was doing. Um, Thought big yarp had just come in there. I know, yeah. <laughs> Where they uh, didn't they take his son away in issue number one or something? Yeah, that's, that's right. Yeah. That's, that's, yeah, yeah, that was the last issue I read. This so is sell this, this It's worth getting back on. Oh man, this is a phenomenal series. I am absolutely loving this. So this is all about basically. Um, the gods and everything's got a god so you've got a god of the moon you've got a god of the sun the earth or whatever it is and there's these um inhabitants of the planets below called the sacrifices and basically what happens is every now and then the gods get together they take some sacrifices from the planet the the, the sacrifices think they're going to kind of go to a, a fantastic party in the sky and have fun and all the rest of it but but what it actually is is they get strapped into a machine and they get turned to um, wine, basically. And the gods drink them and regain the youth. So that's kind of what's been going going on. More recently, one of the, the king of the gods' daughter, who's that girl on the front there, um, discovered what was going on um, and then was, was um, cast out and almost killed, basically. And the duck guy from the first issue that you talked about ended up getting bathed in her... Sounds wrong bathed in her juice um and drinking her or drinking the fluid so he's now got the powers of a god so hold Sound, on so sounds this, complicated we're, we're probably we're probably going to get cancelled for this but hasn't hillary clinton been doing this for years yeah 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 it's based on her autobiographical i think is, is what yeah because doesn't she she kind of dresses up in a cloak goes into the wood and drinks yeah. drinks the fluid yeah. of, of yeah. young I think people they've got to be virgins yeah. but haven't they so yeah this well, is okay. yes different. yes yeah this is ducks Wow. Okay. Well, you know, that's but no, but, I mean, it, it really is. It. I'm enjoying this series. It's keeping us entertained. Um, I'm hoping I enjoy it as much going forward because the kind of the duck with superpowers. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not sure, uh, but it, it it is being good fun. So yeah, I'd recommend picking this one up. Evening, ABZ. Welcome. I haven't seen you in a while, so I hope you are well, very, very well. Uh, Dr. Man, who I think it's the upside of the new big bad. No need for Transformers ties every issue with a proper bad. I think, obviously, it's tying back into Void Rivals there. I have Hillary's number. <laughs> Hand it over. Hand it over. Why not? I'd, I'd like to talk to her about certain things, because I think she's a fucking weirdo. But, oh, well, moving swiftly on. Rook. Right, so what have we got? So this is Rook. So Jeff Johns is on a mission this week, because I think he's got about three or four comments coming out. So Rook Exodus is, um, where are we? Hundreds of years from now, the man known as Rook was once a simple farmer who fled the crumbling earth for a new life on the planet Exodus. Terraform planet where all of nature, including his imported animal population, was completely controlled by humans called Wardens. But when Exodus's world engine failed, the Wardens' power fell into the wrong hands, creating chaos and mass evacuation for those who could afford it. That is, of course, the rest like Rook must scavenge for escape vessel as the war of control or what's left of Exodus begins. That's a well placed snout, isn't it? Yeah, I'm. I'm looking forward to this. Like, um, I didn't. I, I, it, correct me if I'm wrong, but Ghost Machine isn't that a comic? Haven't Haven't we read that, Andy? What was the one that was kind of like um like a Metal Gear Solid type of thing? Do you know, it, it was like a massive mech, and like they kind of went off. It was one of your picks, and it was kind of like this this computer generated thing had to go up into this tall tower to stop. Oh, oh yeah, I remember that. Yeah, was that Ghost? Um, that, that wasn't Ghost Machine, was it? I know, I know the one you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, I can remember the one. And it was like some really awkward, weird drawing and stuff yeah. like that. Oh, there we go. Ghost Machine is the sub label from comics. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know that, but I didn't know if it was a comic that kind of tied into. Did the, 
did they turn into water or something at the end and she was fighting water or something? Yes, yeah, I think it was that. Yeah, yeah it was all the elements ones, wasn't it? That they were going That's right. Each level was a elements. different element yeah. or something, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. I think the art's going to be quite good on this because Jason Faber did the, um, you know, the um, the Joker comics that, that came, like the various Joker ones that came with like the collectible little card and stuff. I can't remember what oh, it was. Right. The, um, yeah. That one. So, yeah, so we've got Rook Exodus from Image. Then, Jeff Johns again, we have Guy Guy. It all starts here. The critically acclaimed team from Storytellers, etc., etc., return for a nuclear wasteland of the best selling Guy Guy for an all new ongoing series starring a violent and unpredictable glowing man. Leaving his home behind, Tariq Guy Guy now walks the radioactive roads of the former United States with the two headed wolf Barney. Who doesn't want a headed wolf called Barney? But as his enemies dog uh, pursue him, Guy Guy discovers salvation from the unlikeliest of foes. But what secrets does a potential ally hold that could help Guy Guy? And exactly how many people are after the glowing man and why? Uh, don't miss this vital action packed chapter in the shared universe of the unnamed saga and the momentous ghost machine rollout. I didn't read any of this previous role. No, me neither. Did you, Andy? That was what I was going to do. Is this a new story or is this a reprint yeah of so it says it all starts here um it's a they return to the nuclear wasteland of the best-selling guy for an all-new ongoing series see I, i'm already out in those last two books because i'm just confused that confused me I think, I think the ghost machine i think obviously ghost machine is is what um von who said the sub of of image comics but i don't know if they're kind of now starting something else that's all going to tie in. What was that other comic that was really confusing that it all tied in? Um, it, there was like some Fantastic Four-esque type of comic that tied into the other part of the universe. It was the other part of the universe and stuff. Is that Radiant Black or something? Yes, Radiant Yeah, Radiant Black tied into something else, which tied into something else, which just got confusing. So that's 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 probably yeah. That's out. Andy checked out a long time ago. There we go. Uh, there we go. Why not? Why not stay with uh, Jeff Johns and read Red Coat? So he are immortal mercenary, kind of a tool. Meet Simon Pure, the newest unnamed hero created by All Star Comics. Jeff Johns, British Red Coat, an all round rogue. Simon mysteriously became immortal in 1776. I'm out. I'm done. <laughs> I'm I'm so out. So th yes. these are all about like, connecting stories and stuff like that. So it's one Apparently big universe. So. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Rook isn't part of the unnamed universe, but Redcoat and Geiger are. Okay. Okay. Well, um, Jeff Johns, you're probably a nice guy, but I'm out, mate. Sorry, I've, I've got to check out on that, unfortunately. And, he, and uh, Jeff Johns is writing all of these? Yes, so Jeff Johns is writing that, that, and that. Which, I mean, out of all three of them, Rook Exodus is probably the one I'd, I'd like to yeah. read. But then I'm interested about this Geiger because I think the first one was like not critically acclaimed, but it, it got some good feedback. Like got the good first, feedback. First, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'd be interested to read that. That one, like a UK Jack Sparrow. No, no thanks. There we go. The Fog, issue number two. Pete, have you been reading this? I haven't yet. No, I haven't put it on my list. Yeah, so this is basically a follow-on from the film, the fantastic film. Um, I enjoyed issue, issue number one. Um, the ending was all right. It, it left enough for me to want to read issue number two. Um, so we'll just have to see what that one is. I haven't got the, uh, the synopsis for that one, unfortunately, because I think I got tired down with that shitty red coat and stuff. Damn, it picks up after the frog, the frog? The frog movie, doesn't it? So I think yes, it's the same yeah. character set a few years later. Mm -hmm. It does indeed. And then we've got, we've got quite a few. Black Demon. Now I'm interested in this one. This is Scout Comics. Ten years after nearly dying in her attempt to destroy the Black Demon, uh, Dr. Bella Gonzalez is ready to try again with a state-of-the-art submersible, uh, an improved chemical weapon, and the guidance of an ageless herald, Mateo. She sets out for the lair of the vengeful Megalodon, a cavern deep beneath the surface of the Pacific. Will she be successful this time round, or will the avatar of the Divine Wrath teach her a lesson she'll never forget? I'm kind of all for that. I was. Uh, what was the what was the um, comic that DC put out? Was it the Plunge? That was all about like the underwater stuff mm -hmm. and Sea of Sorrows. So I really really love yeah, that. Sea of this is obviously a Jaws homage cover type of thing. I'm I'm looking for this. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, the only thing with Scout Comics though is that with the LCSs they don't get a lot of them. Mm. So unless you kind of got this on FOC, the likelihood of you being able to read this. Yeah. Unless you buy it online and then pay for the shipping and stuff, it's pretty non-avoid. You're not going to get your hands on it, which is unfortunate. 
to be fair. Is this something you guys would, would jump into? Yeah, I like it. I like a good shock tale. Um, so yeah, I'll give this one a go, I think. I'll give this you one a go. I th- I'd be interested to see what the, the artwork's like because I've never yeah. heard of the, the artist. So, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, well, I'll definitely give this you one. It, it does have that Sea of Sorrows sort of vibe to yeah. it, doesn't it? Yeah, Sea of Sorrows was awesome, but I think that was down to the fact that Alex Cormack smashed yeah. it out of the park with, a, with the with the um, with the art. Um, Junkyard Joe is another one as well from from Jeff Johns. Has either of any of you read that? I think I read a couple of issues at the start. He's a he's a is he a World War Two soldier or something? I think I can't remember. I, I think, think I read some of that. I think I think he is. There we go. But that's that's all the uh, indie indie picks this week. Yeah. Killer trades <laughs> and hardcovers. Is this uh, Dead Man? Is this April fourth as well, or is or are we okay to say April third? Let us know in the comments, and, and we'll get back to you. Up first, I've gone for the Unstoppable Doom Patrol. This is a TV series that I've always wanted to watch. Um, I watched Titans, and there's a, there's a bit of a crossover to it. Um, I think this, for me, would be a good jumping on point. The fact that it's in the trade paperback. There's been various comics out, and there's been various trade paperbacks out as well, but I don't know why. Maybe I need to just jump into it. I know, Pete, you said it's a great TV series. The TV great- series. I've watched the first, I think, two or three seasons and then it ch- it changed channels i think or something because mm-hmm. i couldn't get the last one the first couple of seasons are superb it's mental it's off the wall crazy kind of but it worked for me in comic form i have to say this is a team that's never appealed to me in the slightest i just mm-hmm. i don't don't particularly get them it's their vision of the x-men really i suppose isn't it mm. yeah. Uh, yeah. never seen some of the characters on that mind that's not the doom patrol i remember that thing at the bottom, the pink thing, not seen yeah. that before. Yeah. What was the other one? There's another one like this, not Doom Patrol. It's the, the Umbrella Academy. Umbrella, yeah, Umbrella Academy. Good TV the, show. The TV show was good. And I think I read one one trade paperback and I couldn't, I just couldn't get into it. Yeah. I just really, really couldn't get into it. But I think, yeah, Doom, the Unstoppable Doom Patrol, I'm, yeah, I might. This, I think this is on like 30 99 so it might be a decent pickup price and stuff like that. But. I've never read any of the comics. I like the TV show, so hopefully this might be a good jumping on point. TV show was good. Yeah, TV show was good. Yeah. Then we've got... Is that to you, Peter? So this is pretty similar to what you've just said, actually, um, Charlie. And don't shoot us, please, in the chat. I've never read any Sandman. Um, never read any of the the um, the kind of the classic Sandman by... Um, is it Alan Moore that did it, I think? Or is it... Um, I can't remember who did it, but I've just not read it. So this is a hardback, oversized hardback, Sandman universe. It looks like it's like individual little interconnecting tales, but it's by James Tinian, and I tend to really like mm-hmm. some of his writing. He's a bit hitty missy, but the vast majority of his stuff I, I really do enjoy. Um, so I just spotted this and thought, you know what, I'll give it a go. I'll, I'll see what this is like. If it's any good, I'll... I'll um, delve further into the Sandman universe. Um, I've not watched the Netflix show either. People keep telling us the Netflix show is fantastic. It's meant to be good, yeah. Yeah, but you ain't watched any of that. Neil Gaiman. Yeah, Neil Gaiman it is. Sorry, my apologies. Um, it was Neil Gaiman. Um, I've been tempted previously to buy the Absolute Editions of the Sandman by Neil Gaiman, but I've never never pulled the trigger on it. And have you read any of the Sandman universe? I used to have the, the trades of it, but again, it's it's one of those things you've got. It's a big ass to dive into the mm-hmm. Sandman universe. Uh, I know that um, young Sean he um, he raves about this series. He's got all the absolutes and stuff like that, so yeah. he, he loves it. Um, but again, Neil Gaiman, it's it's it's, it's a wordy read. It's a hard read. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. Did like, the thing is for me. No, sorry, Andy, make on. Check into it. <laughs> See, the thing is for me, sometimes I can go in blind buying a trade paperback and think, oh, do you know what? I'll, I'll spend the money and I'll invest in it. With Absolute Editions, it's something you've got to have at least an inkling about. You've probably had to read a couple of them to think, oh, I'm going to invest like the 90 yeah. or £100 pound to get the Absolute Editions and stuff. The Sandman Universe, I've never really, I think I've read one or two Nightmare Countries and stuff, county, country, yeah, but I think if it's going to tie in, I don't know, this is this is the good thing about trade paperbacks because you can kind of just sit there, you can invest the time in it and stuff like that. But with this, would I spend the money on it not knowing what it's about? I don't know. But then there's this side of me that's like, go on, just it's only 15, 20 quid, just give it a go. If you don't like go. it, you don't like it. That's the only thing. For me, I'm I'm massively into my horror comics. I like my horror comics. I would love to see Joe Hill 
and James Tinian do a comic. If if anyone knows if they've done one before, because Joe Hill, he had Hill House comics that like, I think two or three years ago that was massive, basket full of heads. Um, you had plunge. Um, there was I think there, there was another Joe one. Full of heads. Yeah, yeah. There was there was loads of stuff, and it was really really enjoyable. And now it's kind of died a death. There's, mm. there's nothing coming out from like Hill House comments and stuff. Um, Phil's Treehouse. Good evening, sir. I use Sandman Volume 1 Trade as a gateway book for non-comic friends. Okay. So that's interesting. Dr. One Hooter said, yeah, Sandman is excellent, but you have to have your thinking cap on. Yeah, I'm out. I'm, I'm, I can't be thinking when I'm reading a comic. I just want to sit down, mong out and read a comic. There we go. I think, I think if, I, if we had to start that, I'd come away from, from it. You're not yeah. silly. Yeah. <laughs> The covers to the it's Sandman different. have always put me off. I've never even bothered with them. There we go. And what was that? Leon Russell, Joe Hill did a Sandman lock and key crossover. Oh, I read that. Yeah, I read was that. Was it good? It, I mean, I'm Ellen a massive, Bonner, massive fan of um, of lock and key anyway. Mm -hmm. And I think it was a pretty interesting story. I, I seem okay. to remember enjoying it. Again, that was the TV show that I never kind of got my teeth uh, into. The TV show is okay, um, but the comic's much better. So, yeah, the Sandman, and it's a hardcover as well. Lovely. There we go, Andy. <laughs> This is if we thought I need to this. jump on this then already. Oh, <laughs> um, so based on everything that Peter had said um, about issue number seven, uh, this is a perfect time to pick up the Sacrifices Volume One mm -hmm. paperback. Um, it's got issues number one to six, and um, I, I don't need to tell you everything that Peter just said. It's 140 pages, and um, because it's an image trade paperback, it'll be less than a tenner. So perfect opportunity to pick up issue number seven and pick this up. Yeah, I think I think for me, I wouldn't. I'd, I'd probably just jump straight into the trade paperback for this. Yeah. Issue number one was good for me. I enjoyed it, but I don't. I think it just it just fell off the radar. I didn't know when it was coming out. Mm. Coming out, so I was kind of like, oh, if I read it, I read it. Um, but you two seem to rave about it, so I might, you know, just just uh, see if it can tickle my fancy once again. Wet your beak. Wipe my beak. Yes. Yes. Wet your beak. Wet my beak. Wet my beak. Flush my feathers. There we go. I'd be crackers not to read it, wouldn't that's, I? That's that's two pints of forged uh, there. That is that is that is two just... pints of forged right there. There we go. That's number one. I mean, it's, I've got to say, it's it's very very nice. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice. What are you what are you, what are you looking at there when you were saying it's very very nice? It's very nice. You were like very very nice. Just look at it and just make sure nice. make fun works. It's nice. No, it's good. It's nice. There we go. So yeah, the sacrifices. Boom. Boom. Final order cut off top three FOC. We're not FOCing around. This is a day to retailers, especially Sab Crusaders. Nine o'clock every Sunday, unite by now. If you don't get your comics in and your orders in by now, you'll end up missing out. You would have seen the news today. There's a massive Scotty Young. We're going to be within the next month or so. Scotty Young is going to be taking over everything. There's, there's comic covers coming out. Galore, every single is the, the next Marvel massive event. Um, we've been speaking to James at Slap Crusaders. Hopefully, for next week's show, we will have something to talk about and shout about the Killer Comics show and the Slap Crusaders crossover once again. So, hopefully, we can share some details with you on that next week. But going forward for this week, we've got our top three up first. <laughs> That's me, isn't it? Yeah. Um, Robo Force issue number one. This is part of the new knee cell, I think it's called, universe. Um, which is linked in with the cella, Nickelverse. that's the one. Yeah, we call it Nickelverse. Um, what's a knee cell? Knee cells from Star Trek. My apologies. Mm -hmm. Um, so this is linking in with the biker Mike from Mars and all that kind of stuff. It just looks mental. I don't remember playing with these figures when they came out back in the day, but I am aware of Robo Force. So mm -hmm. this is a jumping on point issue number one by Oni Press. I just, I just want to give it a go. I just want to give it a go. And there's a whole host of different covers, but I went for this one because this is kind of the action figure. Um, so, yeah, I think this will be interesting. I remember RoboForce. I really do. I don't remember playing with it. I don't know if it was a... Yeah. It, wasn't, it, was, it wasn't a TV show, was it? I can't remember. I don't think so. I'm not 100% sure, to be honest. I just, oh, I yeah, there was, a, there was a cartoon. For there was a cartoon for it. it. Because I yeah. remember like when you sent this through, I was like, I swear I've seen this before. And it hadn't yeah. been because I'd looked at the comment. I was like, I, I remember seeing this or playing with it or watching it or something. Yeah. I think this is going to be the big thing, that, that universe, you know? I think it's going to be interesting. I think it's going to be interesting. And um, there's a deal on... Say again? 
have you seen the action figures for it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I was going to say there's a there's a thing where if you buy, I can't remember how many issues it is. I think I mentioned it a while ago. Uh, yes. But if you buy all the first issues, you get a limited edition Robo Force figure. That's did only you, available. Did you, did you do that for Slug Crusaders? Yeah, 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 yeah. Andy, Andy's put the link up now. Yeah, I can see him chomping at the bit just to tell us. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, this is out on April the twenty fourth. So if you if you are collecting that, there's thirteen issues of it to get through. Thanks, Fuzzy. Um, so make sure you do pick it up. Up next, I, I, this was an absolute no brainer for me. Again, Harley Quinn, DC's. Jesus there's there's Christ. a there's like a mid spring summer type of um, DC universe type of thing happening. DC spring breakout. There's going to be a load of characters. It's it's Harley Quinn. It's Batman. It's there's going to be some crossovers. Yeah. Look, you know by now, I should just oh, call this the Father Queen Killer Comic Show. She's, know that she's black. Look, she's got a ball on this one. She's got bubble gum. She has. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> there we go. Dan Mora, week 18, number 13. This is the DC Spring Breakout. I'm just going to move on because you lot are taking a piss. It's not fair. I, this is not fair. <laughs> oh, look, we've got another one. And I'll pick this one, oh. especially for Andy, because it's Jenny Frisson. It's a kind of Austin Powers throwback. Love it. Harley Quinn. I, I just... Now. I just pre-ordered this with uh, Slab Crusaders today. Of course cool, you did. That's exactly... I knew you would have done. I knew you would have done. 100%. So, but yeah, this is awesome. This is awesome. Love it. Next. Pete? Oh, Pete? sorry. Um, I want to hear Pete's negative feedback, Andy, so I'm just going to leave it on the screen. I love, on the, uh, love, it, love, love Austin Powers. So, yeah, I love Austin Powers. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. There we go. Oh, now this is better. This is better. Whose choice? This is Andy. See, this is better. This is me. Yeah, I, I went for Universal Monsters Black Lagoon issue number one by Image Comics. It's like Frank, um, Frank Miller, is it? Definitely not. This is uh, Josh M. Middleton uh, right, cover. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I think there's only two covers out for this, as, as far as uh, I'm aware. Mm -hmm. uh, but this oh, is a new nice. horror dream team resurrects one of the most iconic monsters, acclaimed creators Dan Waters, who done Homesick Pilots and Lucifer. And Ram V, the men of Desa, Leila Star, Batman, Detective Comics, blah, 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 um, rise from the depths for an all new epic. Uh, years after the events of the original film, journalist Kate Marsden hunts for a notorious serial killer in the heart of the Amazon. Caught in the trail of this madman, she soon encounters an unexpected new threat, but is, if, but is it friend or foe, or is it simply the creature from the Black Lagoon? I'm like, like the Universal Monsters, the, the uh, Dracula was was awesome, was awesome. This is this just reminds me of the TV shows. Do you know what I mean? Like it's definitely going back to the TV shows, like the Bravos and and everything like that. So yeah, this is definitely one that I'm going to be pre-ordering, and it's and it's by that new up and coming writer Ram V. Um, oh, so so, yeah. so that, that's going to be that's going to be interesting. I, I nice to see him getting a bit of work, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't realise there was a blank cover for this uh, yeah. one who's just mentioned there, so that that would be a really good get a couple of those and take those to Thought Bubble and Dan Waters is normally at Thought Bubble. Yeah, so that would be pretty interesting. But yeah, but these just look awesome. They just look like the nineteen seventies posters, don't they? They yeah. just look awesome. Yeah, I think they're uh, they're they're doing it pretty well with this. So yeah, yeah, awesome. Ah, my eyes. <laughs> We thought we'd mix it up this week. We thought we'd save the best or the worst till last. Um, this is March twenty seventh. These are the these are the shit covers. Wank of the week that came out. Um, we're still going with that. Yes, it's the it's the it's the. Uh, we had the good covers at the beginning. Now we're going to end on a high low note. These are the covers that we think you should not be investing your money in this week. Up first. <laughs> Christ. Jeez. Fuck it! Is that, are they peanut samples? So this is a Six Fingers issue number one. Um, you may recall my last. Oh my God. The, it, what my last one was the the, the one hand nice. uh, second print. Uh, so this is the the, the sort of tie in uh, book that's out. So you're meant to read one and then read the other, and the story sort of joins up. But oh, again, nice. this. I mean, that there's no imagination in this book. It, it does what it says, and they've even reused the sort of matrixy digital stuff that's fallen from the fingertips on this on this book. Um, so this for me, like, there's nothing funny about this book. It's just no. pure, and I've not put a lot of uh, thought into it. So um, I don't think I'll be buying this. What about you guys? The, the top Absolutely. corner is just a waste of space, isn't it? It's just yeah. it's it's just shit. 
Abs- absolute <laughs> shit. <laughs> Come on, like, and, and the fact is, this is a second printing. They didn't learn the first time round, so they thought, oh, I don't know, we'll have another bite of the cherry and we'll do this for the second printing. No, yeah, I, I, I'm sure that Suma Kumara is a fantastic, fantastic cover artist, but yeah. I think potentially... He was sleeping um, that day. <laughs> they were maybe rushed, you know what I mean? It was a last-minute job that they had, and he just yeah. thought, you know what, I'm going to dip my, paint, my, my fingers in gold paint and whack it on the book. I reckon he went down to the local police department and went can i have six finger samples and and one of a robot please <laughs> one of a robot and one of a robot or or, or just a key from a keyboard are yeah, speaking speaking as someone who has had to provide fingerprints well, hey, there we go i can curl nothing funny about this cover see what i mean there we go i knew see i knew there was there was something going on there mate right like me Jeez, it just gets fucking worse asked I struggle, I have to be honest, with some <laughs> of Eric Larson's Stop there. artwork. I you struggle. I, mean? I just struggle. I do struggle with Eric Larson's artwork sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So does he. <laughs> but, but then this just looks... I mean, that's meant to be the Savage Dragon, I presume. The little... Is it a ghost kid or something just hovering? No, so that, so in... that's, that's Carl Grimes from The Walking Dead. But, that, but why he's is he literally, hovering? He's just been fucking... He's just been like... Photoshop, or that's not even that's that's paint. He's just literally been dropped in. But I'm Shit. not sure. Is is the Savage Dragon? I'm, I'm presuming because it's a Walking Dead kind of homage. He's meant to look like a zombie, but I can't make head and a friggin' tail of what what it's meant to be. If you know what I mean, it just looks cack. And to add insult to injury, I don't know if you've got the other image, Charlie. But I don't think I put that one on. Uh, well, there's exactly the friggin' same cover, yeah. just in yeah. slightly different colours or something. Yeah, it's it's the same cover, just in a different colour. I just kind of can I yeah. just point out that I've never fucking seen Adidas Samba trainers looking so shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it just looks awful, doesn't it? It's crap. Uh, I, I don't. It's, I've never read a Savage Dragon comic, and I would, I never will. It's been going on for two hundred and sixty nine issues. Yeah, it's got to fucking die now, yeah. surely. I mean, the, the image of Carl there, I think, is embarrassing, just hovering in this purple thing. It has no relevance. It does, doesn't work. I don't get it. Yeah, it looks like a bloody temp. Oh, Jesus. Oh. <laughs> Wayne, we was up here, mate. We was, we was right up here throughout the whole show, and then it's just fucking gone. <sighs> just dropped down. One comment. I don't know if you've been sitting in the show, but that one comment. <laughs> Cheers, mate. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Welcome, if you've just joined. Thank you very much uh, for your, uh, your bloody tampon comment. Andy, what do you think it is, mate? I, I, I've got so many questions. I don't I don't understand, like, what is the point? What's the relevance and the connection between Savage Dragon and The Walking Dead? Is it just an Image Comics thing? It's an anniversary issue or something. Why, why is it? Why are we? Why are we doing a retro nineteen seventies vibe? Yeah. And and why? Why does the, the top of it look like a facsimile book? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I've got so many questions. Um. Oh, my brain hurts. I believe that Savage Dragon's son. The book is told in real time. I can know. Jesus, I've, I've got no interest in reading this whatsoever. Eric Larson, I'm sure you're a nice guy, and I'm sure I could have an enjoyable pint with you, but fuck me, what the have fuck you is ever, this? Have you ever watched... <laughs> this is no relation to his quality of his artwork, because I'm, I'm sure he's a very good artist or whatever, but have you ever watched any of his videos of him drawing and signing? No. He's got a really interesting kind of technique of how he holds his pen, kind Does of. He? Yeah, is it like it's, how you in? It is, but it's yeah, it's it's very odd. Do Google it when we finish the show, and just because yeah, I, I mm-hmm. kind of get my head around how he does it. It's weird. The choice of colours are horrendous, and all the other Walking Dead anniversary covers came out months ago. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Dog shit. shit. Would, Dog would shit. it have made a difference if this was just a black and white, almost like a black and white sketch cover? Because Eric Larson's a great artist. Like some of is he, some of his stuff is, is really though, good. Some of his earlier oh, yeah. works great, but I think he's getting. It's, some of the stuff he done on covers and stuff like that was amazing. Spider Man was very good, yeah. But Spawn, he done some great stuff on Spawn. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, this is just yeah, it's poor. Absolute shit. Moving on from one shit to another. What the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> this is another one of mine. Where's this Batman meets the Jetsons? 
it's I just yeah I just don't get this the the it no cock I don't know what else to say it's it, it just didn't do anything for me um it's not that it's horrendous it's just yeah it doesn't it that doesn't make me want to read the book yeah, no, I mean, Ke- this... to answer your your question, Kevin, yes, they do. They they release them uh, the exact same comics. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've got no interest in reading this whatsoever. Not at all. Andy, I know I'm full just, well you wouldn't. I just don't know anymore. I just don't. City of Tomorrow, Dark Age. Shit. Michael, Michael, Michael. Michael, Michael. I'm actually I'm I'm looking up League of Comic Geeks right now to see what he's see my, my concern is with the guys I don't know if you've thought about this right but you know we, we do like to frequent uh Thought Bubble every year mm-hmm. and my real concern is is that some of these uh creators are gonna be at Thought Bubble and we're gonna be like you know running about with our killer comics t shirts and hoodies and stuff like that on and they're just gonna go excuse me, they'll stop whatever they're doing, whatever they're signing or sketching and they'll have a go. I'm, I'm not. Concerned. I'm not convinced. Eric Larson watches the show. I'm sorry. I'm just. You know. I don't want to bust your bubble. But, but do you know what? Right. I'll say from bubble. day one. When we when we created this show, we <laughs> give honest we give honest opinions. If if we can't do that, then obviously there's there's something going wrong. This is shit. This it is. There's there's no other word for it. If it's shit, it's shit. You can't polish a turd. Do you know and I what think I mean? it's fair to say you know just because I don't like it or one of you guys doesn't like it doesn't mean it's not for everybody do you know what i mean exactly, it's yeah, subjective cool. but now that i'm looking at this more and you kind of need to take it off the screen i'm becoming focused on his forehead and what's going on with the kind of lumps on his head yeah he's he's got like he's coming kind of the a, rock's eyebrow it's a rock's eyebrow is that what it is is that what it yeah, is yeah, yeah. It's, it's horrendous that's what it is yeah. batman go back to the dark age is what i'm saying hey oh you got another one <laughs> sorry i couldn't help myself this week isn't and it again, similar to the the Thor one that you sent yeah, for a couple of weeks. Yeah, again, I just don't know what's happening here. Why is Batman's head... If you're going to have Batman on the cover, where's his, his nut? Do you know what I mean? It's, it just <laughs> doesn't make us want to buy the comic. Oh, there's a random bat flying past. That's nice. Um, but no, thank you. No. I don't think it's a good Batman cover. Put it that way. I, I don't get... I, I can't work it out. I don't know where... All I can see is his hand and a bat. I don't know, like, unless his chest, I don't know where the rest of him is. Like, is yeah. that like a police tape or is it the end of the toilet? Is that just like Andrek's toilet roll that's been scribbled on? <laughs> yeah. He's just... He's know, bad bog. He's bad number bog. two. He's is this issue two. number two? <laughs> yeah. Jesus. No, yeah, absolutely shocking. So, yeah, there's not really much to say about that, to be fair. Bloody awful is what it is. There we go. Uh, <laughs> and then we've got this one. Ooh. Oh dear. I don't know. I quite like that. No mute. Yeah, I mean, this is it's horrendous. Spider Punk arms race. Look at his head. Yeah. Oh, what? Is one. Like now, I don't know this story. <laughs> I don't know this story. Is one arm meant to be bigger than the other? Is that the whole point? Is that the pun? Arms race? I don't, I don't know. Is it not perspective, though? Is it like. He's he's behind him and he's got his tail behind him, so it would be smaller. That's, that's, that's some weird perspective. Yeah, that's, if that, that's, yeah, this perspective. I'm trying to help you, Jim. Jim, I'm trying to help you. If you're in the chat, Jim, let's that's know. His, what obviously, he's wank arm, isn't it? I mean, if that's yeah. the case, do you know what I mean? It's huge. It's, 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 it's spider punk arms race, so. <laughs> that's what is it? Yeah, maybe it's it. Spider punk. There we go. But yeah, this is shocking. Arms race issue number two. Like, yeah, no. Yeah, the story is absolutely horrendous, so the cover's quite fitting. There we go. Yeah, one sort oh. of... Yeah, that one sort Sorry. of fits Spider-Punk now. Fuzzy, did I read the first issue of this? Did it kind of try to shoehorn a load of other Spider-related characters and Marvel characters into bandmates or something? Because if it is, that was friggin' awful. It was absolutely dreadful. A perspective nightmare. Maybe he's trying to outrun the black hole he's being sucked into. I feel like I'm <laughs> yeah. being sucked into a fucking black hole. Why, why yeah. is one handlebar bigger than the other? It's perspective, Andy, and it's perspective. It's perspective, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. So, yes, that is <laughs> the... Ah, uh, uh, my eyes. But yeah, it's just terrible. I think that's it. It's absolutely yeah. just terrible, awful, isn't it? Shocking. Awful book. Jim and yeah, Mafood. Absolute tish. 
Sorry, mate. So there we go. That's it. Oh, my eyes for another week. We are now at the point where it's the Killer Comic Show sneak peek for next week. These are the four comics that will be going up on the YouTube community tab at 10.30 for you to digest and decide what comics we will be reviewing next week. Up we have Feral number one. Peter, did you pick that? I they probably did. did. Yeah, I think, yeah, you did. both picked yeah. that one. That's why I was a comic short and had to fluff thing pick what the fuck I was picking. There we go. Looking forward to reading that one. Yeah. I've gone for uh, Pete. And have you been watching X Men ninety seven? Yeah, yeah. Nope. I've been, I've been. Enjoy- it's not, it's not anything. It's going to win awards. I've been enjoying it, but I thought, why not go for the, uh, for the comic? Episode one and two were all key, but didn't mm-hmm. set my world late. I really enjoyed episode three. Um, okay, really enjoyed episode three. The, it's much better. Positive things about the TV show. So I, 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 I was listening to your uh, commentary on it, uh, mm-hmm. Peter. And I was like, right, I'm going to hold off and I'm going to dive in. But all the comics after this is released, all the episodes, all the comics are going through the roof. Yeah, so, yeah. like, yeah, I'm just like, sure, and get those up on eBay quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah definitely. Uh, Feral was okay. Duke was good. Uh, I've gone for, obviously, X Men, I've gone for Primer as well. I'm not sure why I kind of picked this. I, I kind of needed one to fill in. This is about, I think she's an orphan. She's moved out. She's got to kind of find something. It's from DC. doesn't really say much about it. I kind of put that in as a stocking filler. Um, and Did, then... Um, sorry, Charlie. Sorry to interrupt. That's all right. Just that, that image there and you, your synopsis is reminding us. Andy, did, I can't remember. Did I... Did we read the end of that one where she was a mutant? She was taking photos of things. Did that series end? That's a good... Oh. Do you know which one I mean? Where she was taking yeah, photos yeah, yeah. of yeah. all the... I can't remember I the end of that. What comic was that? I can't remember what was going oh, It was the one Andy recommended, and she was a, she was like, a, a uncle was a killer or something, and she was a, she was, kind of getting revenge for his death, but she couldn't speak, and she was taking Polaroid photos of everything she did and leaving the photos. Something, around. something in the chat will know what what the name of that was. Can yeah. anybody remember what the name of that was? See, this one says, with a father in prison, Ashley Rayburn has bounced from foster home to foster home and represents a real challenge to social workers who try to help her, not because she's inherently bad, but because trouble always seems to find her. But her luck might just be changing when a new couple offers to take her in. I'm not Sounds sure. And then, and then obviously we've got Duke issue number four, which has been sensational so far, so I'm looking forward to reading that. Yeah. Yeah, me too. There we go. Uh, Deadman said he enjoyed Duke and Cobra. Cobra's getting good now. Yeah. Issue number one was all right. Issue number two and three were, were, were pretty, pretty good. Yeah. So that's the four comics. They'll be up shortly. Up next we have. There we go. So let's head over to the vote now. End the vote. Right in last place, we've got Andy with 25%. In second place, we've got Peter with 28, and with 45% of the vote for the second time this year. Congratulations, me. Andy. Me. I mean, you're Charlie. I, I, you know, like, oh. <laughs> I mean, he needed all the help he could get, to be fair. He did, he did. He did. Last Maybe first. that's the plan going forward, Charlie. We, we should pick your covers for you. Do you know what I mean? That's fine. That's okay. <laughs> that's okay. That's fine. Do you know what? Harley never <laughs> fails. She never fails. If you look, Andy had one. Andy picked her. She won. I picked yeah. her. She won. How, how many people voted? That's a matter of interest. Um, I don't actually know. It, I've, 75 votes. No. It was shit, 75 You're lying. votes. No, it was, it was 24. 24 votes. 24 votes, okay. So, I mean, I mean, I've closed all, I've closed all my tabs now. Um, so <laughs> I've like won, I've won. Good night, guys. Bye. <laughs> See you next week. <laughs> I've closed all the tabs, so I can't tell you who, who plays the votes and stuff. But that's not all. That's not all there is. We've we've got some pickups, haven't we? We've got some pickups. Who's got some pickups? I know Andy. You, you showed a uh, plethora I, of, of pickups. I, I only have one um, pickup, and it's not well. It's not a comic. Um, so I picked up from our good friend. William Wang, um, a third-party animated series Joker. That arrived and quick, man. It did, and it's the most impeccable packaging. Was that on the pre-order order as well? Uh, no, this oh, one was already at this one. Um, okay. And so this is it, and it's Look got the that. sort of Brian Boland sort of... Oh, that's cool. The killing jokes, so, yeah. 
I'm um, I'm going to obviously take it out and I'll take it and all the rest of it. But um, if you'd ever like, that's the first one that I've got from mm-hmm. from William. Um, and as I say, the packaging was immense. It was like I had, on each of the corners of the box, I had like plastic corner protectors. How long did that take you know, to come as well, Andy? Um, only a couple of weeks, no, if that. No, like I think it was like just over a week, just yeah. over a week for it to arrive. You didn't have um, to pay customs on it, Andy, did you? No, no. Yeah, um, it, had, it had a Royal Mail uh, label stuck on it, so I don't know if it and it gets intercepted at <laughs> customs or whatever. Yeah. I don't know what the crack is, but I've, not didn't I've, pay a penny. Yeah, I've never paid any customs on anything I've got from Willy Willy Wang. Good old Willy Wang. I have I have a spawn coming next, which is due in the next few days. I've got two Batman on pre order, and I have the Wolverine that you pre ordered as well. Yeah. I just love so, the name Willy Wang. <laughs> love what a name. <laughs> and he sells comic and he sells like toys it's hilarious <laughs> you're a good guy that's a good that picture man. Me. i'm looking forward to seeing the pictures yes peter what have you got for us a uh, few things so first of all i got a, an act of kindness from a good friend of mine who sent us some books um so got raymond briggs ethel and ernest not heard of this one um but i'll give that a read looks quite interesting um, oh. And this, he knows I like my, my kind of my water. So when the wind blows, I've seen the cartoon of this, but I've never read the book. Is that um, you? That's me. It's me. Is it's that me. you on the front cover? It is, it's, isn't it? It's me. me and James, <laughs> that's James T. Keegan. After we had a shave. Yeah. <laughs> right, um, um, I wanted to show you this because me and Andy were talking about this today, and we're probably going to do it. Hold you to little... see the doctor first, Pete. Don't show it live <laughs> on TV. <laughs> um, me, me, and me and Andy are probably going to do something about this, but I suddenly realised that I've gone down the rabbit hole of doing covers again, mm-hmm. and I don't know why. So I've got a shit comic here, a really shit comic, and I've got you know cover after cover after cover after cover. After cover, after cover. Okay, that one's quite oh, sexy. Jesus quite like that. After cover, after cover. And it's a shit comic. That Natalie so, Sanders one you've got was, was quite good. That cover you had there, the uh, Virgin of Natalie Sanders. Yeah. But it's like, what? Well, it becomes an obsession. Do you know what I mean? It, it's mental, mental. And the only other thing I've got, and I'm, I don't know if Fuzzy's still in the comments because Fuzzy will mock us for this, is, I can't believe I bought this, but this is the, this is the, the Madden level that my collecting habits have now got to that I'm spending my hard earned money on tins of air. Fuck me. Tins of fucking air. I'm buying air. I'm buying. (laughs) I'm buying air. Why? So this is an air duster. I've got four of these. This is an air duster, a tin of air. You'll do it, Levin, for a blowjob. (laughs) you've gone from pickup to comics to fucking tins of air (laughs) Jesus Jesus. Kevin I'm so sorry you've joined and we're and we're talking about this is Kevin's first show I think I I think this is the first time he's been in the chat and he's sitting there thinking what What have I done talking about tins of air it's fine it does (laughs) not get better make sure you subscribe (laughs) yeah subscribe to tins of air I mean just as a plug my channel has all the air content you could ever want so yeah, we're please we're 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 if, you, if, you, if you want to know all about Tinder, just give us a shout. Right. Tinder? No, did you say Tinder? Tinder. <laughs> <laughs> That's a different channel I've got, but yeah. Yeah, yeah look, no, he said no makes total sense. See, I'm glad he's on our wavelength. Yeah. I'm glad. So the, the um, question, hold on, the question is, Peter, what are you going to be blowing with your? Uh, yeah. Well, you've given us a good idea, I tell you. Um, I don't know where I'll insert that. <laughs> oh. um, <laughs> yeah. No, no. I, 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 or all seriousness, <laughs> in all seriousness, as you guys know, I'm a big one six scale action figure collector and I've got four cabinets now, two more Be careful coming on what Tuesday. You say, yeah. um, and the dust is horrendous from these action figures. <laughs> but like your cabinets behind you, Andy. So this is an easy way of getting rid of the, the dust. <laughs> So Full basically, you're going, to spend your, you're going to spend your Easter weekend blowing your six-figure yeah. scales. Yeah. Okay. And my wife's away for a few days, so it'll come in handy. Do you know what I mean? Jesus, good thing you work in a hospital. <laughs> and there we go. On that note, yeah, I'll try and sell Chelsea, Errol and Walter next. They'll be charging for dirt. There we go. <laughs> Whoa, that's Pete's channel. Triple <laughs> triple G's dirt. Um, Ooh, make, sure you, make sure you head over there and, and, and give it a like. Give it a like. It's been a good show. <laughs> 
I don't know what I'm saying. I've literally forged Irish Molly's stout. Two, two cans deep. <laughs> three. Three, I had one before a show. Um, yeah, so with that note, we'll be back same time next week. Maybe we won't. Maybe we've been cancelled for the Hillary Hillary Clinton comment. Um, but, oh, yeah. yeah. Among among other comments. Among others. <laughs> among, all the shit, yeah. among all the shit covers. Um, I seriously am debating going out and buying that um, Black here. Panther cover from last week. Mm. I, I quite like it. You know, you know the one with the, the fees. The sketch, yeah, the one in five hundred. Yeah. Just why not? Oh. Why would not go by that? Horrendous. Mister Mister Brooks. Um, awesome video bike that was. That was hilarious. <laughs> where, where does everybody find us in our socials, Charlie? Where can they find you? Have, you? have I lost that? Oh, for some reason that's not included in the slides. You can you can head over on Instagram, Geeky Guy Comics at Instagram or the Killer Comics Show. Uh, Triple G. Everywhere. <laughs> that's, that's not even a lie. You can find everywhere. everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. That's doing it. Hang on, let's get me calm. <laughs> Do that again. <laughs> With my can of air, I'm here. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad I asked. And Andy, where can we find you? Oh, thanks for asking. You can find me on Instagram at perpetual dot comics. Uh, well, I, I am showcasing all the things that I've uh, found in the attic uh, that, that I'm doing a bit of organising, a bit of spring cleaning. So a little trip down memory lane for me. Yeah. So come and join me on there. Evening, folks. Not sure what I've stumbled upon. Air in a can. Yes. <laughs> These are the levels we go to now to get views. Content. This is it. There we go. Thanks, guys. Great stuff as always. Fucking liar. Um... <laughs> 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 I mean, we weren't like, finished, but it sounds yeah, like exactly. Von Hood's dismissing me. Huh? There we go. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to go and watch paint dry. So, <laughs> oh dear. anyway, on that note, you hang up. No, you hang up. Have no, a great Easter weekend. Don't drink too much. Read a load of comics, and we'll see you back same time next week. Yeah, have a good one. See you later. Peace out. Air in a can.